Yeah, buzz YouTube. Six foot hacks here. Happy guys today, the team builder for week number ten of the NPA season four. If you guys are excited for this, make sure to hit that thumbs up button down below and let me know in the comment section below what are the six Pokemon you would have brought to this matchup if you were to bring six Pokemon that we had for this team against the team that we are facing. Yeah, <laughs> just let me know the six mons. Doesn't have to be uh, every single move or EV spread. Just a uh, comment six Pokemon that you would have possibly brought to this matchup if you were playing in our shoes. So this week we are taking on the Colorado Rapidash, who are currently number three overall in the MPA season, as where the Durham Dredagons are number four overall. So if we win this match, we get to third overall. But if we lose, then I think we stay at 4th overall, or we may fall down to 5th overall. So, hopefully we can pull out a W this week against the Colorado Rapidash. Now, originally we would be facing Swami, but he has personal life stuff going on. So, his assistant coach, Frostfire, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be doing the battle for him. And I feel really bad because... I've been, I wouldn't say I've been Johnning Frostfire, like you guys who are in the draft community know what, what I mean by that, but it's just, I've been so focused on the NP, the APA finals that I've just kind of like put this match on the back burner, like I, I really don't think my prep is that good, like I want to give a shout out to the new front office homies, which thank you to everybody who commented on the uh, front office Durham Dragons video I had, I already, made, I already made my picks and I contacted the people that I wanted to join, so big thanks to the few homies from there that were able to help me this week, I believe uh, Aaron, Omega Jolteon, and the Confusion were like the main three, shouts out to Shuckle King 87 and my boys Harris is Awesome and Quinn as well for kind of like helping me really quickly prep for this match like the night before we should be playing tomorrow hopefully so yeah uh anyways this matchup is is very interesting like it, it's it's a lot tougher than uh the matchup that we had last week where we were luckily able to pull out a victory this matchup is, is kind of scary honestly because the biggest threats that my opponent has are going to be latios scolipede and mimikyu those three i think are are the scariest offensive threats. Uh, Scolipede and Mimikyu, however, are only really scary if they're able to Sword Dance for free, which they shouldn't be able to SD for free against anything on our team, so I'm not too worried about that. Latios, I honestly do not think is going to be running a choice set like Specs. Seems a little scary, yeah, but if he locks himself into the wrong move, I get a free switch into something to potentially set up. And the same goes for Choice Scarf, just basically Choice Specs or Choice Scarf, like, they, they both have their flaws and their humongous downsides if he does bring a Choice Variants of Ladio, so that's why I'm expecting Calm Mind potentially, maybe Dragon Dance even, that could be a little scary, like Sub Calm Mind kind of came to mind, but... Yeah, I really don't expect Choice Latios in this game. Also, uh, Krugadal could be a little bit annoying to deal with, mainly because switching into knockoff is a giant, giant pain. So that's why I kind of expect Krugadal to come to this match. Uh, Mantine, Rotom, and Rampardos, I really don't think are coming to this match. I feel like neither of those three have a good enough matchup. Like, if he were to bring Mantine, he's probably only going to bring it to ensure that something like Tail Glow Manaphy isn't uh, that big of a problem, I suppose. But even then, outside of that one job, I don't think Manaphy, uh, Mantine, sorry, has that good of a matchup. Gorgeist and Licky Licky can definitely be brought in. Infernape has a decent-ish matchup in this game, but much like Latios, like Scarf Infernape is like the same as Latios, where it doesn't make a lot of sense in my opinion and really has a lot more flaws than benefits, I think, if you were to bring either one of those Scarfed. So Infernape, if it comes, I expect it to maybe be like Mix, maybe Rocks, Mix, Life Orb, Z Move, I'm I'm not really too sure, but like scarfed or set up, I, I don't expect at all. So let's take a look at our first team member here, which is going to be a Mega Gallade. Because if you look at his team, look at his draft, guys. Mega Gallade pretty much just body bags his entire draft. The only thing that this set does not touch is Gorgeist. Which even then, we have enough answers for Gorgeist if he were to bring it. So I'm really not at all concerned about it 
Uh, Close Combat, Zen Headbutt, and Shadow Sting pretty much hit everything for neutral or super effective damage. I really thought about maybe making Bulk Up into Knockoff. Like, Sword Dance does sound nice in theory, but there's not really anything that Gallade is able to Sword Dance on anyways. So I figured that if I ran Bulk Up, I could Bulk Up on something like Crocodile, Agron, Rampardos, uh, Licky Licky, Infernape potentially, and even Mimikyu possibly. And while Adamant Mega Gallade was my original bring to this match, the main reason why it was made jolly is that SD or Nasty Plot Infernape, which I really don't expect, uh, could be a bit of a problem because if I were to run Adamant, I wouldn't be able to outspeed Timid or Jolly, uh, Naive or whatever, plus speed natured Infernape is running. So I figured that making a Jolly is probably going to be the best in the long run of this matchup. And outside of that, there's not really much else to say about this set. I really don't plan to try and speed tie against uh, Latios anyways because I would rather Shadow Sneak it. Shadow Sneak does about 43 to like 48 or 50 ish percent, which is really good because after Stealth Rocks damage it's going to be in range of being two a ko and then a plus one we do about 60 to like 76 ish percent with shadow sneak to Latios, which is absolutely phenomenal and if mega Gallade late game is able to get a bulk up i really think this thing can pretty much just sweep through his entire team so next off we have a choice scarf hydragon because much like mega Gallade, he does not have too many good answers to scarf hydragon like yeah he does have licky licky but I can always just U-turn out against Lickalicky. And even then, we do have status on our team. So being able to status Lickalicky if it doesn't have the heal bow is going to make it a less of a switch into Hydreigon, which is going to be absolutely phenomenal. But most of the time, even if he does bring Mimikyu or Mega Aggron, I'm probably just going to be clicking U-turn. That way, I can bring in the appropriate uh, check or counter to whatever he decides to switch in to my Hydreigon. But between Dark Pulse and Draco Meteor, we hit absolutely everything for some really nice damage. Uh, Flash Cannon is legitimately only there for the Mimikyu because unless I'm able to get off about 50, like 45 to 50 percent on Mimikyu, which you guys have to remember that Mimikyu has disguise, so I need to waste one turn already attacking it as it potentially swords dances, and then I need to take another turn in hopes that I can live a hit and get off enough damage to put it in range of where Hydreigon can come into revenge, kill it with Dark Pulse. As where Flash Cannon, Flash Cannon does about 15% more damage than what Dark Pulse is doing, and ultimately that could probably be a giant game changer in this battle, so Fire Blast would have been really good for the Mega Aggron, but I think I'd rather have Flash Cannon to be safe against the Mimikyu, because once I break the Disguise and I get off a little bit of chip damage on it, or if I can get off Entry Hazard's damage on it, it should be in range of Flash Cannon, and that's going to be absolutely amazing. Scarf Hydreigon, I think, really has a phenomenal, phenomenal matchup in this game, being able to revenge kill so much of his team, and just kind of check so much of it as well. So next off, we have Rotamo, aka Mojado here, and we are running a nice fist death bulky set because this is my 100% answer to Crocodile. Like, Rotamo is pretty much 70% only here for the Crocodile. Like, 20% of that is also going to be for Mantine if he wants to bring it for some reason, but I really don't think Mantine has a good matchup. And then that last 10% is just kind of here to pivot and Volt Switch accordingly. Uh, Electrium Z, I think, is probably only going to be used against the Mega Aggron if he does bring it. Because outside of Mega Aggron, there's not really much else I would probably pop a Z move on. I guess if Licky Licky is low enough, and I don't do enough damage with Leaf Storm, then I can pop the Electrium Z Volt Switch on Lickalicky, so that could possibly come in handy. But outside of Mega Aggron, I don't think I am going to Z move anything else. Actually, I could Z move Mimikyu if we break the Disguise and we can uh, live a plus two hit potentially, so that could be kind of good as well. Uh, Reflect is there because if you haven't noticed from his draft, he has so many physical attackers like <laughs> Scolipede, Mimikyu, uh, Krugadao, Agron, Rampardos, uh, even Infernape. That's six mons out of 11 that are physical. So I figured that Reflect would probably be a decent bring in this matchup. Honestly, Reflect and Toxic 
are kind of more or less filler moves on this set because between Volt Switch and Leaf Storm, I really had no idea what else I wanted. But I figured that Toxic would probably be better over something like Light Screen because his only real specially offensive threat is Latios. And even then, uh, while Latios is kind of scary, I can still manage it as long as I'm able to keep up hazards and I don't play stupidly around it. So I figured that Toxic probably has a lot more benefits because I can Toxic Latios on a switch in. I can Toxic uh, Licky Licky potentially, Mimikyu possibly, uh, even Mantine, Krukadao, or Rotom as well. So I figured that Toxic would probably be a nice uh, solid bring to this game. Hey, little guy. <laughs> That's... As my son, so next off we have Wander AK Steelix. Uh, this is a really good mod in this match because between Steelix and our next team member here, this can help deal with Scolipede, Latios, and a Mimikyu. So with those three mods being able to be dealt with by Steelix is really amazing. Also, Steelix can deal with the Licky Licky and the Mega Aggron because Mega Aggron can't do too much to us. We can Earthquake and chip down Mega Aggron and then we can Toxic something like Licky Licky. We can Toxic Krugadile, Mantine, Gorgeist, uh, Latios possibly, Mimikyu even. So that's going to be really amazing. Gyro Ball was chosen over Heavy Slam just because Gyro Ball does so much more damage to Scolipede. Like Gyro Ball does less damage to Mimikyu. As where Heavy Slam does more damage to Mimikyu, but Heavy Slam does like nothing to Scolipede, honestly. So I figured that Gyro Ball was probably going to be the safer uh, move to carry as a Steel Stab. Then we have Earthquake because it hits everything else. Uh, the Spadef EVs are to ensure that I believe a Specs Latios does not to a KO us on the switch into Psychic. So that could definitely come in clutch potentially. Uh, depending on how things go. Stealth Rocks, of course, are going to be absolutely phenomenal this match because we're going to be able to get off that chip damage on his entire team and getting off 25% on Scolipede will guarantee that an explosion from my Quillfish has a really good chance to KO him and, squ and Squillfish. <laughs> Quillfish is mainly here just to be able to deal with the uh, Scolipede and to help deal with the Agron as well as the Infernape and even the Mimikyu. So Shuckaberry ensures that even a plus two Adamant Tectonic Rage, which is uh, Z Earthquake from Scolipede does not Oko us and that could very well come in handy. Although Scolipede doesn't really get a free uh, Sword Dance on anything, so I'm not too concerned about it, but it's still I would rather be safe than sorry because outside of Z Earthquake, yeah. there's not much that the uh, Scolipede can do to Quillfish. And spikes in this game are also going to be really nice if he doesn't bring um, too many of his levitating mons to this matchup because we can get off more damage with the spikes along with the Stealth Rocks to help out Gallade, Hydreigon, and uh, even Rotom in the late game. And Toxic is really only there to Toxic his bulky walls, uh, mainly the Mantine and the Licky Licky, honestly. So yeah, uh, next off and finally off we have good old Manaphy again rocking the Assault Vest. I know, <laughs> I know guys, I brought Assault Vest Manaphy so many times, but the great thing about this set is that this is never to a KO by any variant of Latios, which can be absolutely crucial because if I switch this in on Latios, he probably thinks that I can't do anything to him. So then from there, I can go for the Icy Wind, get off about 40% and then put him at minus one speed so I can then outspeed him and then go for the U-turn or the knockoff which would be absolutely amazing. Plus, Knockoff in general has a lot of great utility in this match to be able to get rid of leftovers, scout out for Z-moves, get rid of berries potentially as well. Icy Wind can also lower the speed of something like Infernape in a clutch situation, maybe even stop Skullipede from speed boosting too many times so I can still uh, appropriate deal, appropriately deal with it with some of my other mons. U-turn, of course, is really amazing for momentum as well. And then Scald, if he doesn't have Mantine, Scald Scald is pretty much spammable against his entire team and being able to burn something like Latios or Agron would be absolutely amazing. So yeah guys, that is going to be our squad for this week. Again, let me know in the comment section below what are the six mons you would have brought 
to this matchup and make sure to hit that thumbs up button and with that being said i will see you all tomorrow with the actual battle so thank you for watching later everybody no matter where you're at i'm not here to make friends it's time to attack and deplete your hp with a final smash don't make me turn around and pull a six foot Hacks. Hacks. Six foot, six foot hacks. Hacks. Yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks. Hacks. Yeah. Six foot, six foot hacks. Hacks.